2D joints can be really useful when you want to make a physics related game in Godot. Plus, they're just a lot of fun to mess around with. So, let's have a look at how they work. In Godot, there are three types of 2D joints. You have the damped spring joint 2D, the groove joint 2D, and you have the pin joint 2D. And they all inherit from the class joint 2D. So let's start with a damped spring joint 2D. So when you add this node to the scene, you will see that it inherited a couple of properties from the joint 2D class. It has a node A and node B property. These are the two nodes that will be connected together by the joint. And then you have the bias. This is how much the two nodes that are connected by the joint can pull on the joint. And lastly, we have the disable collision checkbox. If we disable this, then node A and node B will be able to collide. So with that out of the way, let's now have a look at how the spring joint itself works. So first we need to create a node A and B. And if we have a look at the tooltip, it says it must derive from physics body 2D, which basically means that it needs to be a kinematic, rigid or static body. So I'm going to quickly put together a static body with a sprite and a collision shape. And then for node B, I am going to create a rigid body with a sprite and a collision shape. So with that set up, let's now move them to the center of the screen. And let's move the joint to the center of the static body. And then let's drag the static body and the rigid body above the damped spring joints so we can see its gizmo above the sprites. And then let's change the length of the spring joint so it reaches the center of the ball. And then let's make sure that the rigid body is nicely centered at the end of the spring joint. So if we run this, you will see that it bounces a little. But to make the motion a little bit more clear, let's rotate the spring joint. And then let's move the rigid body to the end of the spring joint again. Then you will see that the motion is much more pronounced. But you will also see that the spring joint actually rotates with the body attached to it. You can visualize the spring by enabling visible collision shapes. You'll see that it shows the spring and its length, but it doesn't actually rotate with the spring itself. What is actually happening is this. The spring will swing around with the object attached to it. So now we have that down, let's have a look at the properties of the spring joint. So the joint has a length, which you can see about it with the yellow line in the editor. And it also has a rest length. If the rest length is zero, it's the same as the length. But if we increase this, the joint will start at the length of 176 and then come to a rest when the length is 63. So that basically looks like this. You can see that the ball starts at the end of the yellow line, which is the length, and then comes to a rest when it's close to the green line, which is the rest length. When the bouncing slowly comes to a stop, you will see that there still is quite a bit of distance between the end of the green line and the center of the ball. You can adjust this distance by adjusting the stiffness. Let's reset the rest length and let's decrease the stiffness of the spring. Now, if we run this, you can see that the objects attached to the spring will stretch the spring much, much further. And if we do the opposite and increase the stiffness of the spring to a really high number, you will see that the ball gets pulled to the end of the yellow line really quickly. This also creates a lot more energy. That's why it starts swinging more. So the stiffness is not the only thing that affects the length of the spring. If we increase the mass of the rigid body, then you will see that this also affects the stretching of the spring. So let's now 
reset the mass of the rigid body and have a look at the last property. For damping, I couldn't really think of a proper way to demonstrate this. And I don't think I fully understand this yet. So I recommend that you read the tooltip and mess around with this a bit yourself. So before we move on to the next joint, let me explain why we need to align the center of the rigid body with the end of the joint. The end of the joint is actually where the joint grabs onto the rigid body. So if we move it over, it will grab the side of the ball. And if we run it, you will see that it indeed grabs onto the side of the ball. And the same goes for static bodies. So if we would move this over, it will now use this point as the anchor point for the spring joint. Next up is the groove joint 2D. Let's add this node to the scene and let's move it into view and let's move it to, to the center of the static body. Then let's rotate it a bit and increase its length. Uh, maybe tweak the rotation a bit. So now we need to set the node A and B again. We're going to set node A to the static body again and node B to the rigid body. So you will see that it has two properties. It has a length and an initial offset. And if we change the initial offset, you will see that it moves along the axis of the joint. The easiest way to visualize this joint is to think of it as an actual groove with an object in it. So the object can move around freely along the direction of the groove. But when the object reaches the end of the groove, it can't go any further. So the initial offset is basically where the object starts inside of the groove. So now let's grab the rigid body and move it to the center of the initial offset. You will see that it will slide to the left of the groove because of gravity. And just to prove my point, let's try it as a different angle and a different starting point. And there we go, it will just slide to the right because of gravity. The screw and the ball don't collide because we disabled that in the node settings. You can enable it if you want. And now it's finally time for the pin joint to So let's add this joint to the scene and let's align it with the center of the static body again. And then let's assign the static body to node A again and the rigid body to node B. For this example, I'm going to change the rigid body to a rectangular shape. So we can play around with the weight distribution a little bit easier. So similar to the other joints, the placement of the rigid body matters where the joint grabs the rigid body. Let's quickly move the rigid body under the static body so we can see it over the other node. And if we have it like this, it will grab it on the left side and like this on the right side. Let's test this out. As you can see, it looks like the piece of wood is pinned to the static body. And it's pinned on the point where we placed the joint. So the pin joint to D only has one property, which is the softness, which basically means how much the rigid body can flex from its original pinned position. So let's increase the softness and when we run it, you will see that the joint flexes a little by the weight of the plank. Let's have a look at a practical example for this. In this project, I've made a car using a rigid body for the car chassis. And then for the wheels, I've also used two rigid bodies. And I've attached the wheels to the rigid body using two pin joints. And I've also made the pin joints a little bit softer to make them a little bit bouncy. And as you'll see when we run it, it will bounce a little, which could work really nicely as a car suspension. Let me know if you want a tutorial on a hill climb racing style game like this. 
Now let's get back to the other project. So another thing you can do with pin joints is you can chain them together. Let's duplicate the pin joint and then let's also duplicate the rigid body. Let's move it over a bit and let them overlap. So now let's move the new pin joint to the location where we want to pin them together and then set node A to the first rigid body and node B to the second. And there we go. If we now test this, they are chained together. Nice. And another thing you can do is combine multiple joints together. Like right here, I have a pin joint and I have a damped spring joint, both connected to the same rigid body. When we run this, you will see that it also uses the spring joint and the pin joint. Let's add another piece of wood to drop on top of it. If we run this, let's see, it kind of works like a bouncy pad or something. <laughs> you can do a ton of fun things with these joints. Like for example, create a marble run. Or an interactive chain using pin joints. So it's basically up to you, whatever you make with it. I hope you learned something from this tutorial. And feel free to suggest any notes you want me to cover in the next episode of Godot Notes Explained. I am tired. I am going to bed. Goodbye. <laughs>